Hola, comadres. Welcome to another episode of Comadrando Podcast. I'm your host, Marcy, and today we have another solo episode. Um, so, life has been definitely lifing, and I've been... I've had this these notes to record this episode uh, since December, I want to say, but I didn't feel up to the task because of the things that have been going on. I want to shout out all the people that have been there for me that are part of the Comadres and that are also not part of the Comadres that are just part of my tribe. Um, yeah, it's been rough. Uh, anyway. So we're approaching episode 100. It's coming in fast. I believe this is episode either 90 or 91. Don't quote me on that. I'll throw it on the YouTube video and I'll also put it on my notes. Um, yeah, so sorry. Let me adjust myself. So the show is still, you know, going strong. I, I put up an interview last was it last week? No, the week before last, um, with Al Lauren, who's a martial arts teacher that works with children on the spectrum. That was a great interview. I got a lot of great feedback about it. I'm actually, you know, looking into martial arts programs here in New York City that take children that are on the spectrum as well, so I can put Aiden in. Um, Let's start off with some good news. So I just got Aiden's report card back and your nephew is averaging 83% in all classes. So I think his lowest grade is about a 70. And I honestly couldn't be prouder because Aiden, I don't know. I feel like typical testing environments don't really reflect who he is in person and how intelligent he is. So um, I'm glad that he is having alternative assessments and, and he is taking quizzes in school and he's doing really well. But this 83 means so much. It might as well be, it might as well be 100 because, you know, he really is trying really hard and he has adjusted so well to being in high school and being in a different environment and working with different people. Um, I don't know if I've spoken about this, but his school, high school is actually very similar to a typical high school in that the kids actually transition and they go to different classes. They have multiple different teachers throughout the day. He still is accompanied by a one-to-one -one paraprofessional. However, he's pretty much independent. The person is there just there to prompt him to remind them of where he needs to go because that's something that he needs. I feel like executive functioning is something that we need to work on going forward to help him plan out his day and be more successful. But I know that's going to come with time. So, yeah, he's rocking it out in high school, doing amazing. Um, so today's topic is kind of like a catch-up episode, but also we're going to um, hit a, diff a couple of different notes. We're going to talk about going where you are loved and grief in communities of people with special needs. So um, we're going to talk about grief a little. I know we've talked about it before. Um, we've talked about, we talked about how healing from grief is not linear, that it's something that comes and goes and it's in waves usually. And um, I read this meme the other day and it said that um, grief is all the I love you's and the, all those like loving thoughts and things that you didn't get to express and have with that person that you're missing. Or for this matter, with our dog. We lost our dog Drogon um, recently. I want to say he started getting sick. He was okay for his one year um, birthday appointment in March of 2023. Um, he was fine. And then. I feel like once it started getting hot, I started noticing that he was losing weight. Um, we put him, we left him with um, somebody to take care of him while I was at my brother's wedding. And I feel that 
after he came back from that, that's when we started noticing that he wasn't eating much. At first, I thought that he was upset with me because he felt abandoned. And then I don't know what it was. I think in July, he started um just like throwing up a lot. Not nonstop, but like he would like eat and then drink a lot of water and then he would throw up. And I thought it was like a behavior thing, but apparently it was something more severe that the doctors couldn't get to the bottom of. So, you know, thousands of dollars later, um, they did all kind of like blood tests and send things away. And, and the last thing that they wanted to do was to do an endoscopy. But at that point, I felt that Jorgan was too far gone to continue with all this testing, especially because he was basically emaciated. He had lost so much weight. Um, from March, I want to say from June to December, he had lost about 30 pounds. Um, and that's a lot for, he was basically a puppy. He wasn't like a full and mature adult dog yet. So, um, yeah, that was rough. And, you know, seeing him waste away and then we're like trying to save him, um, it gave me flashbacks, and I'm sorry if I got teary-eyed, but it gave me flashbacks a little about, like, when my dad was sick with cancer. So, yeah, no, it was it was, it was was devastating. And then seeing this poor defenseless creature just get worse and worse, and there was nothing that we can do. Um, he was taking medicine at the end, and we didn't really notice that the medicine was making any difference. So... He got really, really, he wasn't doing well at all, actually. And um, one weekend, um, I had to, like, rush him to to his um, doctor. And they were doing, um, what is it called? They were giving him sweat. I don't know how to say it in English. But they were giving him fluids to keep him hydrated because he couldn't keep anything down and and that weekend, I just decided that um, I didn't want him to suffer anymore. So um, I made the decision to put him down. So it was a rough weekend. I spent the morning with him, and I took him to I took him to the I took Aiden and went to the visitor. I took him to the vet, and um, you know I had already called them to let to let them know I made the decision. So they were basically prepared for us. One thing I do want to say is that that vet, they were very accommodating and they had set up the room and everything. And it was very, a very peaceful, chill environment, um, you know, to do something like that. So, you know, he, he went very peacefully. He didn't suffer, like he didn't cry or, or anything like that. So. That was that. Um, I was so at a loss that initially I had, I didn't want the the ashes for them to give me the ashes, but um, I feel like after two days that I was able to like rethink it, I was like, you know, maybe I need the ash ashes because the biggest thing for me has been trying to explain to Aiden that. Drogon's not coming back, and that uh, he was very sick. I mean, he knew he was sick because um, he would actually ask me, like, what's wrong with Drogon? You know, when I would take him to the doctor or he saw he was taking medicine. And the decision came with the responsibility of having my son deal with loss one-on-one -on -one for the first time. He has lost people in his family from his dad's side who he really wasn't close with, so... It wasn't really anything that he was internalizing just yet. Um, so dealing with that has been a lot for him. Um, he didn't really cry. He received the news well. However, the a few days later, um, he asked me, where's Drogon? And I really didn't have an answer for him. So that was rough. And... This is why I really wanted the ashes. 
So I was able to reverse my decision and they were able to send me his ashes afterwards. So basically I created like a little memorial for Aiden. Um, they gave me his ashes. They gave me a paw print um, set in cement. And I was able to, um, through Google Photos, send for pictures of Drogon to be printed out to have around the house. And I printed Aiden's favorite Aiden's favorite one with his dog and that has been able I've been able to talk more about it with him and um he does ask for him occasionally but um I remind him that Drogon's in heaven and he's not you know he's not gonna come back. Um and he's okay for now. Yeah so it one of my biggest questions that it was like for me when we went through that was how how do I conceptualize death and and lost and make it make something so intangible tangible in a way um and how do i make space for him to grieve and and hold space for him while similarly like simultaneously grieving myself so yeah it was rough um he passed on december i want to say the ninth sorry let me look it up it was either the ninth or the twelfth? I'm drawing a blank right now. Yeah, I, I, it, it, he passed on the tenth um, of December, and yeah, no, we've been working with each other and and helping ourselves heal. I decided to do a sadna for loss um, to help me deal with the grief myself. Uh, yeah, so so far so good. Um, thank you to all that reached out. Uh, I want to shout out my friend Claudia and my friend Ami for being there for me because they've, well, Claudia lost a dog um, and Ami is a dog mom as well. And they were able to be there for me and kind of, you know, walk me through the process a little and hold space when I just needed to talk. Also, shout out to my friend Jasmine that has been on the show as well. Yeah, so that was one of the biggest things. Um, among that, there have been joyous things like um, Mami Chula is back, um, the social club. We have a membership. Uh, people pay to be a part of the membership, and they're able to participate in monthly events. Right now, we're capped at membership because we want to you know, kick it off with a small group of women that we're going to provide high quality experiences for. Um, but Claudia has been doing a phenomenal job and we just had our first two events last week. Um, we kicked off the membership in December 25th and then uh, we've been doing all these other things. Um, among them, we recorded a video um, for Instagram to advertise the the return of Mami Chula, which was super cute. It was like a Christmas theme one um, with Santa and all that. And I, yours truly was in there. So if you guys want to check it out, remember it's Mami Chula, Mami Chula Daco online. Um, yeah, so yeah, these events were so great. We first had a styling event, a styling 101. It was partnered with Nordstrom and we had a bunch of stylists there teaching women how to style their bodies and how to make their wardrobes work for them. And that was very interesting. I was able to participate. And then there was another one that took place in Sephora this weekend that I wasn't able to attend because I had previous engagements. But also, <laughs> um, so this, I, I mean, I'm laughing now, but it was scary. So I've been dealing with health issues. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but I used to be very, I was severely overweight before and I've gotten on my fitness and I've gotten better and I've gotten better at eating and all that. However, I want to say, I want, I don't even know how many months it's been, but I have been getting, I had been getting out of breath when I was like climbing stairs or going up a hill, like severely, like 
I had never been that out of breath in my life. And I'm just like, maybe since the last time I had COVID, something came up. I don't know. Also, I was being like a dude in the sense that I was literally not going to the doctor because I, since switching schools, I have been so busy and not making time for the things that I needed to make time for. And I'm honestly not going to blame the school. It's just, it's been all with me. So yeah, I hadn't been to the doctor and like, I didn't do my physical last year. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to admit how long I had without going to the doctor. But when I went that I was not feeling well, the doctor, um, you know, he's like, oh, your blood pressure is great. Your blood sugar is great. Okay. Who's breaking your heart? Uh, whatever. He's very funny. He's from, I don't know what country, it's an Eastern European country. So he sends me to get a blood panel done. And then we're like talking and he's like joking with me. And then I leave. This was like last Wednesday. La well, yeah. Last Wednesday or something. I leave, whatever. Um, they said that they would have the, the, what is it? No, I think that was Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. And then Wednesday um, morning, they call me. They're like, girl. And I'm like, what? So the doctor's like, your hemoglobin level's at a six. When it's supposed to be at 12 to 15. So I'm like, what? Like, what do you mean? Because, you know, as as part of women's monthly health things, like, we do lose blood. But I didn't feel like I was losing much. So, um, basically with the hemoglobin so dangerously low, it's, if you don't take care of it, your body can go into shutdown mode. So doctor was like, yeah, you need to get your butt to the doctor, to the hospital ASAP and get a transfusion. I was like, come on, you're being dramatic. He's like, no, he's like, do you want to live? I'm like, okay. So I guess I do have to go to the doctor. So I'm at work. I'm like, oh my God, do I like, what do I do? You know? So um, I spoke to my supervisor. We're trying to decide whether I should take Thursday off or Friday. I ended up settling for Friday to take off. Um, so we go through all the motions, whatever. I live everything ready. I left my coworker ready. And I head to the hospital to get a transfusion then. Unbeknownst to me, it was, I mean, known to me, but not like unbeknownst. I wasn't holding this like at the front of my brain. Basically, it was a full moon. And teachers know what goes on in the classroom. P police officers know what happens crime wise. And hospitals get just as gr like insane. Um, so the hospital, I went into Columbia Presbyterian here on 168th. And basically, there was a line to check in. So I'm waiting there. I was there for at least 45 minutes. And I was just like, absolutely not. So I decided to go to the hospital in Jersey. Um, my mom picks me up. You know, we get everything together. I was taking the day off the next day anyway. So Thursday after work, I head over. Um, when I went to the hospital, they checked me in, whatever. Very good care, of course. but. Even if it was Jersey, it was still a full moon. So there was so many people in the hospital, like crazy amounts of people. Long story short, I checked in around 6.30 p.m. And I didn't get to talk to, well, okay. They did all the procedures they needed to do. I got an EKG. They did a blood panel themselves. I, they sent my blood work down. They matched me with a donor, all these other things. So finally, I get discharged by the physician on staff at 3.30 in the morning. So I was there. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 9 hours, basically. Crazy. Um, the transfusion itself only took about an hour. But then I know that getting a donor and like matching you and all these things like take time, obviously. Um, plus, like people were having what's it called? People were having 
people were having a uh, cardiac arrest, like l- l- right and left. Uh, I had to wait for like almost an hour to actually have a doctor see me, not a doctor, have a nurse print out the just discharge papers and just, you know, let me know that I'm okay to leave. Um, I'll be right back. So after all that running around, so after all that running around, um, I got my transfusion. I get home like almost at five o'clock in the morning. Mom and Aiden decide to call it a day. Um, yeah, and then we just stayed home and I've been in recuperation ever since, which was like just this weekend that just happened. So I'm feeling better. I am not looking pale like I was before. I was literally so. So, yeah, that was that. It's funny how <laughs> we don't really think about our health, especially when we're like on the go when we're, we're like nonstop. And I try to be as conscientious as possible because of the way that my father, um, you know, his illness came on. I was not we were not as a family aware of the fact that, you know, he had a brain tumor until it was like too late and it was like stage three I believe so you know as a Virgo and as a woman and as a hypochondriac I'm always getting checked out and it just so happened that the little bit of time that I lasted without checking myself out I'm like (laughs) not at optimal health just because I was like ignoring Mm -hmm. telltale signs because like looking back at it of course retrospect is 2020 Looking back at it, yes, I was not feeling well. You know, um, my color was ghastly. I was literally looking like a baby vampire, like I belonged in Twilight or something. It was bad. Um, and uh, I, I really didn't know how sick I was feeling until I... So another thing that happened was that my... um. My comadre, my friend, Mari, that you have been on the show a few times already, her son passed away suddenly. And um, we were at, you know, we were supporting her as best as we could. We went to the funeral um, of me and a few of the other girls. Anyway, at the funeral, um, I'm sitting next to Sandy, which has also been on the show. And she looks over at me. And she's like, Marcy, is it me? Or are you looking like pale, like really, really pale? She's like, I don't know if it's your highlight that you wore today or it's that you are like super pale. So I'm like, I stop and I'm like, is it because I didn't get any sun this summer? I didn't really go away. I was like, it must be that. And I'm just like, it must be that, whatever. So, but it's still stuck in my head that she pointed that out. And then now looking at pictures, I'm like, oh my God, like I was literally, I didn't have enough. So hemoglobin, I'm going to give you the definition of what it is. Cause I myself was super confused as to what the heck it was. At first I thought it was like the red blood cells. Um, I, and then I thought it was like, I don't know, like I, I, I haven't taken biology in forever. I have no idea. So hemoglobin, what is hemoglobin? So it is the most important component of red blood cells. It's the part of your red blood cells that carries the oxygen. The hemoglobin test measures how much hemoglobin is in your blood. So you have your red blood cell and on there, there's a hemoglobin molecule. It Oxygen binds to the heme and the heat on the hemoglobin molecule. Each red blood cell contains several hundred million hemoglobin molecules, which transport oxygen. So your your body comadre was a body anemic, apparently. So, um, yeah, that was that. It was very scary because I also... I don't know, as moms, we just like automatically, sorry guys, so I don't drink my green juice. I'm trying to make sure <laughs> I'm actually eating and like alimentandome. How is it? Um, Taking in the right type of nutrition. Cheers to hell. So, yeah, so, you know, we ignore so much and, and we're just like, go, 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 especially when 
we're not feeling 100%. You know, I'm not going to lie. I did feel a little down dealing with the sick, with like Strogan being sick and, and all of that. And I was um, not really participating as much in my life as actively as I wanted to um, because I was so worried about him. Um, but yeah, no. So of course it takes your friends to be like, Hey girl, what's up? You good for you to be like, uh, Oh, maybe I'm not good. So after I heard, after Sandy told me that, and then of course I went out with someone, shout out to that person. And, uh, we were going up a hill together and I was like literally out of breath on a hill that I'm used to going up all the time. And that when I'm at my optimal health. I can like run up, the, well, not run. Okay. We're going to get there eventually. But I can like quickly walk up the hill without becoming like super out of breath. Um, yeah. So I made an appointment with my doctor immediately. I was like, yeah, I'm not feeling too great. I don't know what's going on. Yada, yada. So then that happened. But I'm glad I was able to take care of it with time. And then now this opens up more questions. <laughs> Because now, like, what's causing it? I, I'm like, you know, what else is going on? So I'm uh, at the behest of the people at the um, emergency room. I made an appointment with a hematologist to make sure that everything else is good. Because everything else in the blood test, in the blood panel reads normal. Um, hemoglobin is low and obviously iron is slightly low. It's not like super duper low. Um, but yeah, we got to check out and figure out what's going on and make a plan of action. Um, of course, I am the the herbal girly. Uh, my family, my grandma, especially from mom's side, we do a lot of remedies. We try to heal ourselves via food and teas and all these other things. So immediately when I saw that, I'm like, oh, I got to make beet juice. So um, we prepare beet juice with orange juice so beet has a natural is a natural source of iron the orange juice helps you absorb the iron if you don't take your iron supplement or iron whatever iron iron rich foods with some citrus you're you're it's going to be hard for your body to absorb that so we created well not we created this is something that has been passed on by generations but we do uh, beet juice with orange, and I, I throw carrots in it for good measure. But it's actually delicious, and you don't actually have to add sugar. So basically, it's like literally, you know, juice the beets, juice the carrots, mix that together, then add um, organic orange juice. You can do your own orange juice that you squeeze yourself. Because I wasn't feeling, like, super energetic, and I did it, I was feeling really exhausted, I decided to just opt for a nice organic orange juice that I added to the juice and I've been drinking that, which is funny because I did the blood panel Tuesday when I went to the hospital Thursday night, they did the blood panel again and the, the hemoglobin level had gone up by like 0.4. So it was a, instead of being 6.1, it was 6.5. Woo. But, um, yeah, no. So hopefully <laughs> I'm on the road to recovery. I have a follow-up appointment this week, so pray for me for the ladies that pray and the ones that send out good vibes. Send me out all the good vibes that you can. What else? Um, I have a friend that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, that person has surgery, and I was helping them recover, and thank God they're better. What else has happened? Oh. All the teachers out there that are teachers here in New York City, if you ever have thought about transferring to New Jersey to teach, guess what? Jersey for the whole year is waiving the fees of transferring your license out there. Okay? All the information is on their website. Your girly did that. So hopefully soon I'll be having my New Jersey license. Um, I don't have a job offer yet, but I know that with this dire need of teachers, there will probably be quite a few. I just have to make sure I ask the right questions, so I don't want to get bamboozled again. It's a, uh, it, 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 
Yeah. It's giving Plymouth Rock didn't land on us. Wait, we didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. We've been bamboozled. Yeah, no. Whew, and we'll get into that in another episode. But yeah, no. I want to change. Guys, I don't know. This is something I've been sitting with, with for a long time. I feel like I just... I get bored at jobs. Or like I get disenchanted or disencantada in Spanish. Um... And it loses its glimmer quickly. And I don't know what it is. I feel like, you know, when I sit with myself, it's probably more like I don't feel like I'm living up to my potential or I'm not fulfilling what I could be doing. And I feel like I was being underpaid uh, in previous experiences. This experience, I feel like I'm being paid well, but then I'm not giving being given the time to do the things that I need to do. So I don't know. I like, I'm looking for that spark, something that's going to make me want to, you know, continue to do the things that I love and, and all that. But I need to like meditate more on that and figure it out because I feel like it's never too late, but like I can hear my mom's voice in the background. So that maybe I so like your tool for that. So Yeah. I need to sit with myself and see what the hell is going on. But, yeah, so that is that. And I'm trying to think of what else has been going on. Yeah, so the New Year. Oh, okay, New Year's Eve. Um, The New Year came in pretty quiet. We... I was able to mend a relationship with someone that I was estranged with in a way. And we were able to spend time together. And after that, we went to my family's house. And that was awkward. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. It was awkward. It was weird. It was kind of like, okay, uh, you know, what am I doing here? Um you know what I have decided and I did have a conversation with my mom because like I know she would love for me to be like all lovey-dovey with these people but the thing is that I set the standard with how I allow people to treat me by how I stand up for myself and what I put my foot down to so I'm tired of being the bigger person I'm tired of you know giving everybody the benefit of the doubt like you said what you said, then you're going to stand in that. And I'm not, I'm not making excuses for you unless you come to me directly to have a conversation and apologize. I'm not doing the work. I'm not, I'm not stepping out of my little comfortable bubble to approach you and, and, and try to have these conversations. Cause the thing is that people get used to you being the bigger person all the time. And then they feel like it's your obligation to do that. And it's not, it's really not because if I didn't, do anything to to damage the relationship that I shouldn't be held accountable for mending that. If you don't feel like you did anything wrong, that's cool with me. If you feel like you did something wrong, that's cool with me too. But like we're not doing this back and forth. I'm not I'm not that's done. <laughs> 40 years old, we're not doing that anymore. I'm sorry. And if that offends somebody then if the shoe fits wear it um but yeah so yeah new year's was weird and then um it was just me mom and aiden and yeah no it was very reflective very chill um nothing that i can nothing that stands out at the moment um yeah so um with that being said the tiredness and all of that i'm sorry i'm jumping around but we're definitely planning a vacation in the sun somewhere. Um, I don't know if it's going to be now or for spring break, but I preferably, I prefer for it to be now because I need it. Um, yeah, vitamin D levels are also low, but that's to be expected. Um, what is funny, though, that 
the report that said the vitamin D levels were low was saying how that it has psychological effects in people. And as we know, um, I suffer from like seasonal affective disorder. So this lack of sunlight plus, you know, not feeling all like 100% like boom, bam, it's Marcy has been like throwing me off really. Um, yeah, so as a new year started, I really became, well, I'm not started, as it was approaching, I became a little bit more reflective about how I show up for people, you know, like, I feel like this is all, like, now linked, right? This was a huge segue to get to the to the other part of the conversation that I promised we were going to have at the beginning, which is... um. Going and showing up where you are loved and wanted. Okay. Um, so before we get into that part of the conversation, let's talk about how my habits of, or my history of love has been, um, and my thinking of love and how patriarchy has contributed to that or and, and all that. So... As a child, I felt that, and this is no fault of any of my parents, but because I had this parent that was emotionally unavailable for me, I felt that I had to go above and beyond to be able to be loved, to be the best, to be loved. And then I didn't feel that I deserved that love just as is for existing. So that led me into the pattern of dating men that were emotionally unavailable, right? And it's funny because it's it, it wasn't my father, right? However, yeah, I was I was looking for men that I felt like I needed to be challenged. Like if it was easy, I felt like it was boring, and I would not pursue anything with that person because I didn't get that thrill. You know, that little, the little tingle or like that feeling like you're in a, in a, in a, in a elevator and like all of a sudden it descends or in the airplane and then like it descends and it drops altitude. I wasn't getting that little, you know, excitement and it's really fucked up because it's like, we all deserve love. We are love. Like we shouldn't feel like we need to work to be loved. We should be just accepted holy as we are for the amazing people that we are. We shouldn't have to feel like we need to do work to be able to be loved. So, you know, and then this other, this other concept of like women need to compete, compete for a man, compete for the job, compete for all these things. And and that's false. Like there's enough love and there's enough, everything going around that there the universe is abundant like the world is abundant there's enough for everybody so the this this fallacy of us feeling like we need to fight each other for love for acceptance for you know abundance for money for that's 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 not that's not how we're supposed to be <sighs> yeah so the last person i dated who i actually mentioned on the show Ooh, at the beginning, um, yeah, it was the episode of Miguel. We were kind of briefly touching upon that person. And I was analyzing that relationship. And I was, like, really, really down on myself that it didn't work out. And then I started really, like, looking at it with a fine, not with a fine tooth comb, because you don't look through a fine tooth comb, but looking at it with a magnifying glass and really digging in. And I realized before New Year's that nothing I could have done could have made that person stay. Nothing. That person was not the person for me. And the fact that they couldn't see my worth or they couldn't see how special I was or how dope I am and that you know, I have all these other qualities that, and that's literally their loss. But the thing is that 
I shouldn't feel bad that they couldn't see that because that that was my journey. I guess my journey to get to the new level of Marcy, whatever this iteration is. I'm not going to say 2.0, but whoever I am right now. So there was certain things that I overlooked because I was like so wanting for that to work out. And it's like, and it, I feel like it's a red flag now when I'm dating. If a person does not have a good relationship with their mother, um, that's a big red flag for me because somebody who doesn't appreciate like all the things that their parent has done for them. And I'm not going to say that every mother is great. No, but we have to love our parents as they are because no, we don't have to. I choose to love my parents as they are flaws and all, because I know that this is just her. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I know that my mom, for sure, for sure, like we spoke about this on the show before, when the compadre was on the show, if she knew better, she would have done better. And we can't blame our parents for everything, you know? It's it's so much more than them, you know? It's their situation, like how they grew up, the things that they were dealing with. They are human beings. They're not perfect. They're not these gods that we are supposed to put on a pedestal and think that they're never going to change. So, you know... A person that chooses not to have a, par- a relationship with their parent, that's a huge red flag. Um, it's like, I don't know. I, I just feel like the men that I've met that have gripes against their mother, it's very hard for them to appreciate certain women and to love them the way that they deserve to be loved. So that that was a big one. Another <laughs> red flag was that he actually thought that this guy, Kevin Samuels, um, was right. Like, the things that he would say were correct. And, you know, he would, like, defend oh. the things that this guy would say, which were, like, pretty heinous. But, um, yeah, no, it was weird. But, yeah, I was in a weird, I was in a weird space at the time. And I'm glad that I'm able to reflect and look at it in a different way this time because I like yeah it's normal we're human the, the loneliness does creep up and there's moments that you feel like damn like <laughs> all these all these guys are whatever like everybody's in a relationship and and you're out here single but I am here to tell you there's nothing wrong with that and I'm also here to tell you that it's Honestly, it's better to be single than in a bad relationship because you could be in a relationship with somebody awful that treats you badly, So, which I have been in before, you know? Um, there was this one, there's this person I follow who's into spirituality, is very dope. Um, and one thing that he said was that the divine masculine man builds his woman up and does not feel the need to tear her down or make her feel low. <clears throat> the same thing for women. A divine, a woman in her divine feminine is not going to feel the need to tear her man down or whoever, her partner down to make themselves feel better about who they are as a woman. So those are things to keep in mind. Um, yeah, and as Valentine's Day approaches, like, love yourself. Those are things that we're constantly working on, at least over here in this camp. We're constantly working on different ways to love ourselves and to show ourselves love. And right now I'm showing myself love through nurturing myself and feeding myself. Um, I, another reflection was that I wasn't fully eating. I wasn't eating nutritious food. Not that I was eating badly. I wasn't eating at all. I wasn't really hungry because it was, it's a nonstop, like go, go, go type of environment where I'm working at now. And, um, I don't know. I feel like after the pandemic, I'm just not with that that type of stress in 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 the workplace anymore. Um, but yeah, so I have a couple of interviews that are coming up that are really great. I'm still in my journey of dating, you know, talking to different people, it gets really exhausting, <laughs> and I honestly sometimes I feel like giving up but i'm not a quitter so 
<laughs> so we'll see how it goes. But besides that, I hope everyone is doing well. Oh, I, I want to mention another thing. Like, the world is such a crazy place, especially with the things that have been going down since October 7th. And, you know, two groups of people, you know. I'm not even going to get into the logistics of it because I don't want to get canceled, but I feel like a lot of people need to consider what side of history they're going to be on and whether you're going to be supporting the oppressor. Anyway, so with that, comadres, I'm going to end the episode. Hopefully this was entertaining and that you enjoyed yourselves. I have a few interviews coming up with some dope people so watch out for those and wait, wait, wait. All right. I'm going to cut this into the episode before it ends. So I caught, so I had actually, I invited, so after the funeral, we were, I was with Claudia and her sister and I invited them over to my mom's house. That, that weekend was so healing. We were able to spend time together and my mom made a sancocho, so that was another, like, really yummy, like, healing food. And if you've never had sancocho, it's, like, this stew um, with root vegetables, and it has all kinds of delicious um, meat in it. And so Claudia was able to eat my mom's sancocho, which is not everybody gets to eat it, you know. So, um, and then we actually started watching Love on the Spectrum, the new season. And if you have not watched, you need to sit down and watch it. It's, I feel like it's the best season ever. The char the characters, the people have grown so much. Um, I'm obsessed with them. Like, they're such sweethearts and, and, and it shows so much versatility. One thing I do want to touch on is the fact that Danny is so open about her sexuality and she's very vocal about expressing, you know, that they do get sexual desire. They're not children, they're adults and we should respect them as such. So um, one thing that did like go off in my head I was, as I was watching the show is that we need to, I need to make a more concerted effort about teaching Aiden about sex. Not like I don't know if I'm ready to do it myself. However, like making sure that he's getting that instruction somewhere and that, you know, it's aligned to what I'm okay with and I believe in, you know, because as, as young adults, they get so much messages about sex from everywhere, but it's better for us to con not control the narrative, but to be able to be present and know what they're learning so that if they have questions, we can answer those questions or redirect them in the right direction and get them proper information and such. I feel like I want to have a sex therapist on that works with people on the spectrum. Um, oh, my God. I love the person that was helping them, the relationship coach. She was wonderful. I forgot her name, but she was so awesome on the show. I would love to have somebody like that on the show to give the kids more advice and like give parents more advice on how to help their children um, be successful in relationships. If that's something that they want for themselves. Um, one thing that resonated a lot with me was the fact that they were so lonely and like they would like state it like, you know, I know, I know some of them, the way that they express themselves is a little bit over the top, but I love that they're like honest and, and tell us exactly how they feel. So, yeah. So if you haven't caught it, watch it. And I feel like maybe I want to have a panel discussion with some of the ladies that have already been on the show to discuss the new season and uh, topics that came up there. All right, comadres, as I was saying before, thank you for listening to your comadre. And coming on the show, to listen to the show, rather. Um, I'm going to end the episode here, how we usually end it, which is follow me at Comadre on the Pod. And if you have any questions at all, make sure to send me a Comadre Gram via email at marcy at comadre on the pod .com. Um, Or slide up into my DMs. 
I'm actually taking a personal social media break, but I'm still available via um, Comandando Pod Instagram. Uh, don't forget to visit our website, which is www.comandandopod.com to read our latest blog post, find out about future events, events, and get your official Comadre merch. Thank you for spending time with your Comadre. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.